Atul Kocha for the South East and Richard Corrigan for Northern Ireland are next in the kitchen, and their styles couldn't be more different. I need some oil here, and a tongs if you have it. Well, he's throwing energy out and I'm absorbing it. I think when you're trying to catch magic, there's only moments in the kitchen you can catch it. Both have won through to the public vote already this week, but neither is complacent. I just feel a bit more at ease going into this competition, into the main course part. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a lovely dish to eat. Sure. So it'd be very interesting to see what their reaction is. You wouldn't mind if you don't win on this course. Did I say that? Atul is serving tandoori chicken. He's made one significant change since the southeast heat. He's taken out the traditional red chilli colouring to tone it down for the national final. Mmm, another Atul creation that smells divine. Have you been thinking about what it would actually mean to you to win? I would be on top of the world if I could go through and cook just one coast for Her Majesty. I think it'll mean everything. Good stuff. Happy? Happy. Well, Atul seems confident, but should he be? Well, it has changed its colour. It has, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely changed colour. No, I don't think it looks as pretty, personally. No. The flavours do come through wonderfully strongly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very precise, isn't it? There's an extraordinary, really... well-defined flavours. I think he's an absolute genius with spicing this man. Mm. I, I think this is a very nice dish. The problem I'm struggling with here is where does Indian food fit into the menu? Well, I think that's in a way it's for the great British public to decide. The judges seem to be very happy, but in the prep area, Atoll's tandoori chicken is causing a stir. They are brilliant. Yeah, yeah. 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 fantastic. They are lovely. <laughs> fantastic. I just can't see that on the British. <laughs> no, I got, that's my yeah. problem. It's great. It's I really just dish. can't. I just don't know where it's going to fit in. Yeah. I think that was one of the most exciting and delicious dishes. I really do. I think it was wonderful. I'm going to give it eight because it's just a lovely dish. But I actually regard this as an absolutely classic English dish of the future. Oh, <laughs> right. So I'm going to give it eight. Very eight. good. For the great Anglo-British menu competition, I am going to give this a resounding nice. nine. High praise for Atoll. Speed is of the essence now, we need to push on. Okay. Back in the kitchen though, Richard's feeling the stress. Need some of these baby, these ones here. Okay. His dish is complicated, and in the Northern Ireland heat, he had some problems. And I got a little tip the last time, it just, I, although I left it in the oven for half an hour, it was still rather raw going out. It still was. The timings are crucial, and a lot hangs on the execution too. I forgot how many parts of this dish there is sometimes. Wow. Right. Come plating up time, he's a whirlwind of creative energy. The usual uh, Corrigan flurry at the end. Do you think it's, it's cooked to your liking? Look at that. I mean, look. It's, it looks beautiful. Really. OK, guys. He's proud of his venison wellington, but will it withstand the judge's scrutiny? I say. I don't think this looks as good. It smells good there. Yes. The farce is not is not actually covered the the the, uh, the meat quite so evenly as last time. Actually, I remember last time the pastry was a bit raw, and it's no better cooked now. For me, the the beauty of this dish is its rareness. I think the problem mm. is marrying that up with the requirement of the pastry in the oven. Mm. Mm. 